What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm bringing you my 2024 wide receiver redraft rankings. Uh, I already came out with my running back rankings. Uh, if you wanna check that out, it'd be in the description below or you'll see a little notification pop up above my head. But today we're gonna talk wide receivers. And before we get into actually breaking down each of these guys, I just wanna preemphasize this a little bit with wide receivers are weird this year. You know, this is one of the weirdest years for receivers because while the class feels deep, I don't feel super secure as, or with a lot of them being my wide receiver ones. Um, I think there is a, and when I break this down, I will have it into tiers. Uh, the first video I did with running backs, I kind of just broke it down by rankings, but I think tiers are important. So I decided to go with a tier based rankings this time. Uh, we still have one through 24, but I have tiers. Uh, but you'll see when I and when I talk about which tier everyone is in, I don't feel super confident in a lot of guys being my wide receiver ones, even though they're technically ranked there. They feel like more high end wide receiver two, low end wide receiver ones. Without further ado, let's get into it. You know, let's just get right into it. Uh, so the first couple guys, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on. Right. I think where this really starts, where the rankings really, really start is at wide receiver seven, but we'll talk about the first, you know, six guys first. So uh, Tyree kills my number one receiver. And for me, I would love to have Justin Jefferson there because he's awesome, right? Justin Jefferson is the best receiver in the league by, by far, but I can't have him number one with JJ McCarthy as his quarterback. It just doesn't feel right to me. Um, and I think this comes down to wow, how do you play fantasy football? How do you evaluate talent? Are you going to draft a player who's more talented in a worse situation or a player who's in a better situation that might be a little less talented. And most of the time I lean on the talent of the player rather than the situation. But I think Tyreek Hill is such a good player also that, hey, he's in the offense with uh, Mike McDaniel, who's obviously really, really great at being you know, a head coach and an offensive play caller. Uh, we have Tua, who's an established quarterback. I believe he led the NFL in uh, passing yards last year. And Tyreek Hill is really great. So that's why I have Tyreek Hill number one. I have Justin Jefferson number two. Uh, for me, the talent is just great. Um, I, I just think Jefferson is the best receiver in the league. I don't care if it's Sam Darnold, if it's J.J. McCarthy. I don't care who it is. I mean, we saw him do it last year with a billion different quarterbacks. So I have no problem with Justin Jefferson. Three, we have Jamar Chase. Once again, I think the talent is just ridiculous. I think he really pushes the envelope for best receiver in the league also. Um, he's a little bit more of an inconsistent player because of T. Higgins, and Joe Burrow has had some injury questions, but I still think Jamar Chase is awesome. And then we go to C.D. Lamb at four. C.D. Lamb was, I believe, the receiver one last year, wide receiver one last year in fantasy football, and the guy's awesome too. Um, I just want to see it a little bit more before I fully trust it. Not saying that Lamb isn't awesome, but last year was his first true major breakout season. And before I kind of just go all in and I see that he's the wide receiver one in some spots, um, you know, that's cool. I, I'm not going to call you an idiot if you do that. But for me, I'd rather just see it one more time before I'm really like, okay, this guy's the number one or number two receiver. Really great. But do you trust Dak Prescott? Do you trust that offense? And do you trust that this guy who's done it once, not saying he hasn't been productive before, but when he's done, you know, top, you know, one or two numbers in one season, I don't like to just go all in on that guy. I like to take a step back and, you know, hey, I'm willing to miss it. But I still have him number four. So it's not like I'm crapping on the guy. And then quickly, we have A.J. Brown, number five, who's just awesome. He's another one of those guys that's a little up and down uh, just because there's a lot of weapons. Jalen Hurts, you know, is a good quarterback, isn't the, the best quarterback out there, but A.J. Brown is just a beast. Um, I would ha be happy to have him as my wide receiver one, especially probably nearing the end of round one. I think he's going to be a guy that's kind of in that 10 to 14 range, which, I mean, he'll probably be closer to 10 than 14 uh, with you know, some running backs mixed in, but A.J. Brown's a, a baller. And then on the more consistent uh, side of things, um, Amara St. Brown from the Detroit Lions. I mean, this guy is just the focal point of their offense. I mean, he's going to get all the targets, anything underneath, down the field. Um, I kind of hated on him last year, and I take credit for, I take the, you know, the, hey, I really missed out on that guy. He's a great player, and I didn't think he could be a wide receiver one just due to the lack of kind of, uh, you know, air yardage on the on passes, on targets. But 
if this guy's going to get 100 plus catches and be targeted 150 times like he was last year, then hey, man, like he's great. You know, I, I'll take that as my wide receiver one. Probably not the biggest boom player, but very consistent every week, you know, week in, week out. And then this is where the list really starts for me it's Puka Nakua. And we'll start talking about kind of tiers here. Um, I have my Puka Nakua, uh, Garrett Wilson type of group here. And this is the one that for me, is kind of the toughest. Um, and it's because while I like these guys, I like the Puka Nakua, Garrett Wilson, Brandon Ayuk, Devontae Adams, you know, I don't feel super great about them all being my wide receiver ones because they're not all proven. Sure, Devontae Adams is. But when you look at Puka, right, it's one year and Cooper Cup missed a ton of time that year, or last year. Puka showed that he's a really good player, but you have an aging Stafford. You have Cooper Cup back. You know, will Puka Nakua really step in and be the focal point of the offense like he was last year when Cooper Cup was out? And even when he came back, Puka was still really good. I just worry that Cooper Cup isn't finished yet. You know, there's a higher probability that Puka Nakua is more in a, in a split where it used to be of the Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, um, Robert Woods, where, sure, they ended up the season really well. But they were never consistently, you know, great week in and week out. It was kind of a bumpy ride. And Garrett Wilson, the guy is super talented. But are we really going to go and trust Aaron Rodgers for one more year? It, it, it's hard to do, but I'm willing to take the bet on talent. And I think Garrett Wilson, if Aaron Rodgers is healthy and can provide one more season of just, you know, being a good quarterback, I don't even need him to be really elite. I just need him to be good. I think Garrett Wilson can easily be a wide receiver one. Um, I have them as a, the lower tier wide receiver ones just because it, it's up. It's going to be hit or miss. I mean, it, it's it, it's going to come down to Rodgers, I think. If Rodgers is good, then I think Wilson could be great. If Rodgers sucks and really like just isn't back to form, then I think Wilson could really be a big miss at wide receiver one or in the wide receiver one range. So that's why I have him a little bit lower. Then we move on to Brandon Ayuk. And this is another one where I go, what's the situation? You know, he wanted traded. Then he had this big breakout season where he only caught, you know, like 80 balls, but he went for 1,400 receiving yards, had some good touchdowns. Another guy, really awesome. But it, am I really willing to bet that this guy is going to be the, the, you know, the receiver that's going to go downfield and just be this, you know, 20-yard-a-catch guy that's going to finish as a wide receiver one week in and week out only catching four or five balls? That's a hard gig to, to really, you know, maintain. That's a hard thing to do. Um I think he's awesome. I think he's a great route runner. I think he's better than Debo Samuel by far. We'll talk about Debo in a little bit. But Brandon Ayuk for me is just, you know, are we really going to trust this guy who had the crazy breakout season on some numbers that seem pretty improbable that are very Mike Evansy, right? Very downfield heavy. Are we going to trust that another year? Not saying he can't do it. Not saying he's not going to do it. That's just why I have him a little bit lower as my wide receiver ones. And then we go to Devontae Adams. This one, I could I could be a big miss on Devontae Adams. I think he's a great player, but Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, whoever else they want to start, not a lot of promise there. I, I don't think – I had Aiden O'Connell is like – he's an okay quarterback. I think he's just – I don't think he's going to be a starter in the league for long. Gardner Minshew is a good bridge quarterback. You know, he's in there with the Ryan Fitzpatrick's of the world. Uh, you know, he's just one of those guys. I don't think he's going to be a team's future, but, you know, for one year, maybe he can help Devontae Adams. I think Adams is a good player, great player, but he's getting up there in age, not a great quarterback situation. And that's kind of why I have him as the last wide receiver one in that tier. Um, and then we move on. We move on to the high end wide receiver twos with wide receiver one upside. So all these guys I kind of felt were you know, in that range of the lower tier wide receiver ones, but I really do view them and would feel more comfortable if they were my wide receiver twos. And that is the group of DJ Moore, Chris Olave, Marvin Harrison Jr. as a rookie, Michael Pittman Jr., Debo Samuel, Mike Evans. Um, these guys, to me, have the potential to be wide receiver ones, but I would feel more comfortable with them as wide receiver twos. Uh, for starting off with DJ Moore, uh, I mean, 1,400 yards last year in a – sneaky good season that I don't think people really will appreciate in a way. Um, I mean, looking at his stats right here, I mean, 1,400 yards with a team that really wasn't good and 96 catches, eight touchdowns. You know, that's the most in his career. Uh, you have Caleb Williams coming in who, I, I mean, I'm not saying I, I don't believe in Caleb Williams. I do. 
But how much can a rookie receive or a rookie quarterback really throw for? You know, the rookie touchdowns uh, passing record, I believe, is Baker Mayfield with 26 or 27 in a season. So it's not that high, you know, and the other weapons there, Roma Dunze, if he steps in and play, plays right away, you have Keenan Allen, who's just going to be kind of the underneath guy. You have Cole Komet. You know, I hate using the there's too many mouths to feed argument because DJ Moore is a really good player and should demand the, the, you know, the majority of targets. But I think you're going to get a lot of this. You're going to get a lot of up and down with DJ Moore. I think he's going to have some big weeks and some bad weeks. Um, I still like the player uber talented. I'm a talent over situation guy. That's why I have him at the top of this tier, but I can still see some potential roadblocks for him being a true wide receiver one and him falling into more of the wide receiver two. Same thing kind of with Chris Olave, man. I mean, I think really talented player, um, crazy route runner, very explosive after the catch, had some drops issues last year. I'd say was my only real concern with him as a player, but I still think really good. It's just Derek Carr, man. That guy sucks and he's not really that bad but he just isn't the guy that you want throwing to your receivers for fantasy you know he has these up and down games like crazy he's scared to take big shots it seems like anytime Chris Olave was open downfield he wouldn't throw it but then the second Rashid Shaheed was downfield he would bomb it um I think Chris Olave is a really good player uh he showed the upside he's kind of like Garrett Wilson in a lot of ways you know um really talented but the situation it just isn't ideal. And to be honest with you, I, I, I'm a little worried that Derek Carr doesn't make it through the season, make it through the season as the starter. Um, I, I'm worried that they just drafted Spencer Rattler. I'm worried they, they drafted Jake Hayner last year, I believe, in the fourth round, who I actually liked a lot coming out of Fresno State. Um, so it, it's up in the air, man. I mean, I think Derek Carr kind of overstays his welcome pretty much anywhere he goes. So that's my worry. Then we move on to Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. to me could just be awesome, but he could have some, you know, he could have a slow start. You have no idea what is going to happen with him. Uh, he's playing with Kyler Murray, who's had a lot of fantasy productive re uh, receivers in his career. Um, but my big concern is he's a rookie. And uh, the only reason I have him up here this high is I don't really feel super safe about you know, some of the guys under him, like Drake London, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, DK Metcalf, Keenan Allen, Cooper uh, Cup, blah, blah, blah. G guys, really talented players. I really like those guys. They're all talented, but I haven't seen them do it. And and I'm a little worried about kind of the older guys and Mike Evans and Stephon Diggs a little bit where I go, OK, Marvin Harrison, maybe I'm just willing to take the shot on you. Maybe I'm just willing to take the shot that you just break out and you you ball out. And at the worst case scenario, I mean, I think you can be in a thousand yard receiver that catches five or six touchdowns. Maybe I overpaid with you at, you know, what wide receiver 13 or 14, but I know you'll finish up right around there because has, you know, Michael Pittman done a lot more than that? No. Has Debo Samuel done a ton more than that? No. Has Drake London? Has DK Metcalf? Not really, right? So I, I'm just willing to take the shot on an uber talented player, one of these can't miss prospects in Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe he starts off slow. Maybe he hits it right out of the gate. Maybe he has a bad season. Maybe he has a great season. It's up in the air. It depends how you play fantasy. If you're willing to risk it for the biscuit, you go for it. And if not, play it safe and take Michael Pittman, who we'll talk about next. So Pittman, another guy, right? Not a big touchdown maker in his career, but I think he's really talented. You know, coming out of his uh, rookie rookie season, or uh, sorry, sophomore season, I believe, I made a video on him, and I was like, man, this guy, he can win everywhere. I mean, he can win short. He can. He's a winner, jump ball, contested guy. Like, this guy's got great ball skills. I think he's going to be really good. Had not such so great of a season, then came back last year and balled out. Um, Anthony Richardson, everyone seems to be super, super high on him as a talent, uh, even though he only played a couple of games. But I think in those games, he proved to us as a fantasy community that this guy's willing and able to be the quarterback of the future at least showed enough promise for me to go, okay, I can trust him to actually get the ball out on time, throw it to Michael Pittman and get him targets. So uh, Michael Pittman to me isn't the highest upside guy. And that's why I have him here as like a high end wide receiver too, because I don't want him as my one. Um, you know, he just doesn't provide the upside that I need. I think the floor is just super, super safe with him. Then we move on and I'll kind of combine these guys just quickly. Debo Samuel and Mike Evans. I mean, these guys are, Really talented players once again, but 
you know, they're in weird situations. Debo Samuel, you know, hasn't done it really as a receiver. He has to mix in the run game to really make him fantasy, you know, relevant, um, which I like but don't like. He's battled a lot of injuries, and Mike Evans is the same, you know. He's had a lot of hammy in- injuries. He's getting up there in age. Baker Mayfield is back, so we hope that he can be fantasy relevant again. They just lost Dave Canales as their offensive coordinator. He's now the head coach of the Panthers. Um, so how is that going to change, you know? Chris Godwin was really involved last year. You know, I could just, I've done this before where I've seen the Geno Smiths have this kind of miracle comeback season, and then the receivers kind of fade away that second year coming back. Um, I mean, we just saw it last year with Geno Smith where DK Metcalf had a decent year, Tyler Lockett had a decent year, um, Jackson Smith and Jigba had not very impressive of a rookie season. So that's my worry with those guys. A lot of upside. They can be easily. I mean, Mike Evans can go out and score 10 touchdowns and go for 1,200 yards again, and I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. Why would I have him at you know wide receiver 17-ish? You know, it, That's stupid. But with Mike Evans, I think there's a little bit more risk. And same thing with Debo Samuel. It's hard for me to rely on a guy that's going to maybe catch 800 receiving yards or go for 800 and five touchdowns through the air, and then I have to rely on him getting – you know, 300 rushing yards and some touchdowns on the ground in a backfield with Christian McCaffrey and him to stay healthy, taking an extra, you know, 40 to 50 rushing attempts on the season, taking those extra hits. Debo hasn't been super healthy in his career. So that's why I have him kind of this lower end tier. I think he can end up way higher than some of these guys because he's just super talented. But at the end of the day, can he stay healthy? Then we move into, you know, kind of our last, of our 24, we'll talk about the top 24 guys in Drake London, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, DK Metcalf. These guys to me are just rock solid wide receiver twos. Drake London for me has been another guy that's just talented, has shown flashes on film, but has had the worst quarterback situation probably in the NFL with Taylor Heineke and guy came with uh, Desmond Ritter, right? Not great situations there. So last year, I mean, you know, pulling up his stats right here, I mean, a thousand yards for Drake London in a season where, I mean, they really focus on the run game and and honestly, not even a thousand yards. I mean, he had 905 and two touchdowns. So for him to be kind of this high on the list is pretty crazy, but I just believe in the talent. I think if Kirk Cousins could come back healthy, I just saw a thing that basically said, Kirk Cousins said, like, if the Super Bowl was today, I'd be playing. So I think he's going to be ready in, you know, two, three months. I think Drake London can be one of those guys that breaks out because he's in a good situation with Kirk Cousins. Uh, then we move on to kind of the duo of Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs. I, I kind of wussed out and I put him back to back. Um, I'm willing to take the shot on Nico Collins, but I'm not willing to take the shot on Stephon Diggs. Um, it, it comes down to, for me, Stephon Diggs is a great player, but he always, the last two years, he's he's tended to fall apart at the end of the year. He's faded. And he's heading into his age, you know, 30 season as well, where he's getting up there in age, not anything crazy, but I start to wonder, you know, why does he want out of Buffalo? Why did Buffalo, who's trying to really make a Super Bowl run, just get rid of the guy? They just said, okay, man, we'll trade you for nothing to the Texans. I just don't think a team that's really in a playoff race that wants that, you know, has this window with Josh Allen just goes, okay, bye, Stefan. See you later. I read into that, and to me, that makes me feel like they go, this guy's faded down the stretch the last two years. You know, in the playoffs, he had that one really bad drop where it could have been a deep play. Um, everyone knows what I'm talking about. And, like, it, it's to me, I just, I'm willing to miss it with Diggs. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'm okay with that. I still think he could be a solid weekend, week out player. I think he's going to be ebbs and flows. Same thing with Nico Collins. Um, just because, you know, Tank Dell's there too. They have Dalton Schultz. It's a lot of mouths to feed in that offense and a lot of good players too. So I think Nico Collins and Stephon Diggs are going to be this. You know, they're going to have that up and down games where you have, I think, Nico Collins going for six catches for 120 and a touchdown. And then you had Diggs that went, you know, four catches for 50. And you went, okay, not Diggs week. So I think you're going to get a lot of that. And then we come down to my last rock solid wide receiver two, and that's going to be DK Metcalf. I mean, this guy is the epitome of inconsistent. <laughs> I mean, I love the guy. I think he's awesome. I think if he played in an offense that had a good quarterback, I think this guy could be utilized like nobody else. And I've just, I, I'm looking at his stats now, right? And I've never seen a player use so differently year in and year out. You know, as a rookie, right? Averaged 15 yards a catch. 2020, he averaged 15 yards a catch. 21, he averaged 12. 
2022, he averaged 11. And then last year, he averaged 16.9 yards a, a catch. Almost 17 yards a catch. In 2022, he had 90 catches for 1,000 yards. Last year, he had 66 catches for 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. Metcalf is special. He's young. He's talented. I just don't know how they're going to use him this year. Is he going to be the guy that catches 90 balls again and goes for 1,000 yards? Maybe then I'd feel a little bit more about him being a higher upside guy. Or is he going to be that guy that catches 70 balls for 1,000 yards and some touchdowns where he's going to be very inconsistent week in and week out? That's what I don't know about DK Metcalf. And I, if I'm going to own him in fantasy, I have to know what kind of player I'm getting, and I don't. So that's kind of why I have him at the bottom end of this rock-solid wide receiver two group. If he, he's going to finish, he's finished pretty much every year of his career as a 1,000 to 1,100 yard receiver, you know, eight to 10 touchdown range. That's a wide receiver too in my books. He's going to win you some weeks, but he's also not going to help you on some weeks either. Then we move into the sketchy wide receiver twos. And these guys to me, um, I don't know why I have Christian Watson there. Christian Watson is not supposed to be in this, that cross him out. That is incorrect. Who am I, who did I mean to put him there? That's my bad. Who do I have on my rankings? I meant to put Christian Kirk. I apologize. That's Christian Kirk, not Christian Watson. So, <laughs> so we'll talk about them quickly. So, uh, sketchy wide receiver twos. I have Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, Christian Kirk, not Christian Watson, uh, and Devonta Smith. So, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen to me is in this new offense, but he's old. He's thirty-two. Um, I think he's going to be okay, but I think you're going to get those weeks where playing with the rookie quarterback, it's not Justin Herbert anymore. He's not the focal point of the receiving game with DJ Moore and Roma Dunze and Cole Komet and a rookie quarterback. Uh, that's why I have a little bit of hesitation. I step back and I go, once again, talented player, not a great situation. Still believe in him, but that's why I have him at the, you know, maybe 20-ish mark, about 20. And then we go Cooper Cup. Uh, to me, this one is just one where I go, he's a little bit older. He's about 30. Battled a lot of injuries the past two years. He's super talented. But they have Puka Nakua, who seems like he's on the rise. They have Cooper Cup, who has been this amazing receiver, but has battled injuries the last two years. He's sneaky old in an offense with Matthew Stafford. So who knows how that goes for one more year. I'm willing to, kind of like with Stephon Diggs, I'm willing to go, hey, I'll miss it. I'll miss I'll miss the Cooper Cup explosion. If that happens again for one more year, I'm willing to miss it. But I'm not willing to get burnt on him being this guy that plays, you know, 14 games, but then misses some with a hammy, and then some games he's in and out. I'm just, I'm willing to take a step back and go, hey, all right, man. Hey, league mate, you want to take him? Take him. I will miss. And then we move on to our last two guys for the sketchy wide receiver twos in Christian Kirk, not Christian Watson, I apologize, but Christian Kirk and Devonta Smith. Kirk is in an offense where it's Evan Ingram and him and rookie Brian Thomas Jr. Outside of that, there's no one else super concerning there that's really going to take a lot of targets away. And last year, uh, Kirk had a really good year. Uh, he missed the last couple games due to a groin injury, but you know, in the games he played, he wasn't a you know a huge, huge, huge upside guy. But you know, last year finished with 57 catches, about 800 yards, and three touchdowns in 12 games. Um, you know, and that's good. Obviously that's a, I would say a pretty relatively good season, not anything crazy. And that's kind of why I have him as the sketchy wide receiver too. Um, I think in a season where maybe you went heavy with, uh, running backs, you could play, you know, pair this guy to be your wide receiver too. And you might be okay with it, but you know, in the games where Kirk played and not including the game where he got hurt, you know, if you averaged all his points out or all his stats out for the season, I mean, he was on pace for, 130 targets, 87 receptions, 1,200 yards, and three touchdowns, or five touchdowns. So a receiver that's going for 90, 1,200, and five as a wide receiver too, sign me up. I'm in. Um, the situation to me hasn't changed that much. Um, they really believe down in Jacksonville in Trevor Lawrence. So the only thing that changed for me is Brian Thomas Jr. being there. But I just saw Calvin Ridley go for 1,000 yards and Evan Ingram you know, catch 80 to 90 balls last year. So... <laughs> and it's in a situation where nothing's really changed and he should come back healthy and completely fine. I go, okay, Christian Kirk, you know, if, if, you know, and he's lower on a lot of guys list. So for me, if Christian Kirk can just kind of be this, you know, wide receiver two, that's kind of being overlooked. I'll easily take him there. And then we move to Devonta Smith with Jalen hurts. It comes down to AJ Brown's a target there. Jalen Hurts kind of took a step back as a passer last year. Now, I wonder if that was an offensive coordinator with Ben Johnson, I believe, uh, getting 
canned because that was pretty bad. Um, they just didn't utilize Smith right last year. It was too many bubble screens. It was too many weird RPO things and just not letting the guy run downfield. I know he's not a big guy, but this guy is, I mean, Smith is vertical. He's a vertical stretch the field kind of player. And it, it's, you know, when you keep him towards the line of scrimmage, it's cool sometimes, but that shouldn't be the majority of his targets. He was really underutilized last year. In this situation, I might be a little low on the guy, um, but I, he is in a true situation with an absolute stud in front of him, and that's just where you're going to get this. You're going to get that once again with him. It's it's just how he's always been. Really talented player, but in a situation with a stud uh, wide receiver, A.J. Brown, in front of him, hopefully a new offense coordinator really makes it uh, the offense kind of pop. You have Saquon Barkley there who could take some touches away, um, you know, just be more of a focal point in that run game. And Jalen Hursley took a step back last year. I could be wrong. Could be right. Who knows? And all right, those were my top, we talked about 30 guys, uh, wide receiver ranks for 2024 redraft leagues. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm going to have plenty more coming. Um, you know, hey. My air conditioner just broke. Been working a lot. so But the videos will be coming. I promise. Uh, I should have quarterbacks coming out next. The quarterback rankings. And then tight ends to follow. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to check out my running back rankings. Uh, it will be in the description below. Notification up top. Thank you for watching. Leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.